Hey guys, it's Jason here, Old Car Auto Guy. Welcome back to the channel. Although I am on vacation right now, I had to stop into the shop here to pick something up uh, for a little project I'm doing at the house. And because it's the electronic age, I'm not completely out of the loop when things are going on in my business. You see, when Bill finances a vehicle for somebody, I get notifications when those approvals come through. So I've been paying attention, although I shouldn't be. And he sold one of our vehicles and it showed a trade-in on the deal. What was that trade-in you might ask? It was this lovely jewel. And this lovely jewel just might be our ticket to some future shenanigans. Yeah, I got a little bit of got a little bit of rust down there. At the bottom of the door. Down there, that rocker panel cover is probably holding up, holding a, or hiding a lot. At least I can see right in here. Yeah, she's pretty soft. Tires look like they're half decent, but we can fix that. And judging by the wheels, I'm saying this is probably at least like a, and that is a 2007. Inspection runs out in two weeks. License runs out this month sometime. And she looks like she's a little bit of a mess inside. Guys, stay tuned with the channel because we might have ourselves a shenanigan vehicle. You know what that means. So as I drive through the lot here, I do see an empty hole. But for the life of me, can't seem to remember which vehicle was parked there when I left here on Friday. What I don't see here is the 2011 Ford Focus and come to think of it, I do remember seeing that on one of my notifications that come in. So pretty I'm pretty happy to get rid of that car. We've had that car for quite a while. It, uh, it's been a part of our inventory, I think, since at least Christmas time, if I can remember, because the lady that traded it in, she traded it in on a red Chevy Orlando, and we did get rid of that in December. So, yeah, glad to see that one gone. So now, as I showed you in a previous video, I think this is probably one of the coolest things that a dealership has done in a long time. The only thing that I can't understand other than the fact that I know that these Dodge, this late 80s Dodge and the early 90s Chev over there are simply old vehicles and can pick them up really cheap at a junkyard type of thing. I feel it kind of sends a mixed message. And that mixed message would be And that mixed message to me would be simply this. Dodge and Chev were so good in their day that Ford has finally caught up in 2018. Sorry guys, that's just what came to mind. And I'd have to say that those new power rams, power wagons, whatever you want to call them, were one of the sharpest looking Dodge trucks, I think, that ever came out in that fourth gen body style especially with the Cummins. I'd like to have one of those. I like the look, and uh, the only problem is I ain't got the quid. So guys, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and chat with you a little bit about this guy. A couple of the reasons why I haven't been driving it a whole lot lately is uh, simply because it had been really, really hot, and with no air conditioning in that car, it makes it almost unbearable to drive and I've expressed that before in other uploads 
But one thing I did notice about the last trip that I made with the car to the Moncton Nationals is that with the new rear end gears, the 321s, it tends to rev quite a bit higher uh, than the old 271s that were in it stock. Uh, now that makes sense. The car gave me excellent fuel economy. It doesn't anymore. And so I was talking to Dad, and Dad, his background is transmissions. He started a transmission shop here in town. And his expertise is old school transmissions, like this guy. So one of the things that, one of the reasons why Dad got out of the transmission business was because everything was going electronic. Um, it was slowly getting into it when he was getting out of it uh, back in the late uh, 90s. And when electronics start coming into play, you really got to put yourself back into a situation of being a student all over again. So he wasn't prepared at almost 50 years old to go back to school knowing that he probably only had a few more years left in him uh, to want to work at doing what he was doing. So um, he had the opportunity to sell it to his employees and he did. So car's transmission was sold and dad retired at 49. So I kind of got off on a little bit of a tangent there, but what I'm trying to get at is dad knows his transmissions. And one of the things that I think that he's going to help me do is find a modern transmission that will allow me to get more gears essentially. So a four speed with overdrive um, would do the trick. And we want to make sure that we can put that into this car so physically fitting isn't the problem, it's the mounting of the of the cross members and uh, the drive shaft. So I do have the original drive shaft out of this car, which is quite a long drive shaft sitting over in the corner, and I never threw it away. Um, I almost did a couple of times, but in the back of my mind I always thought, you know what, I want to get rid of this three-speed transmission. 727s, tough as nails. Um, they'll put those behind, you know, uh, the big Hemis of their day, and uh, they just they stood up. I'm not getting rid of it because I don't think it's going to stand up. I'm getting rid of it because I'd like to be able to. Again, it's not so much the fuel economy issue. I, I get it. I'm driving a car with over 300 horsepower. I'm not expecting to get 50 miles to the gallon, but what I am expecting to get is a car that I can drive from point A to point B that isn't going to be screaming down the highway and that isn't going to burn oil because of the fact that it's revving too hard. Now when you're driving down the highway you're doing 75 mile an hour um, as a rule and that seems to be an awful lot uh, for this car with the current gear and transmission setup that it's got. So uh, probably in the near future uh, we're going to start looking for what we think we need for a transmission and uh, I'll keep you up to date on that with what we're going to go with and uh, when we go to install that we'll make sure we catch it on video for you so that we can show you what we're doing. So that is really all I want to talk about right now with the car because I haven't been getting a whole lot of use out of it. Now granted on September the 8th we are heading to Bangor, Maine and we are going to be hitting up the car show um, wheels on the waterfront there so uh, stay tuned for that. So another thing that I just wanted to pop in here right quick was I stumbled upon this guy's YouTube channel. And the only reason why I stumbled upon it was because he's from the Maritimes. And Maritimes means New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI. And when I, when I found the page, I started watching some of his videos. And in the back of my mind, you know, I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking, the guy kind of looks familiar. You know, almost like I've seen him or, 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 or talked to him before. But nonetheless, I didn't know really where he was from. So I, uh, I, I liked his channel. I subscribed to it. And on his most recent video, which just came out today, I sent him off a little message saying, you know, hi from St. Stephen, New Brunswick. And <laughs> the message that he sent back was, I'm from Little Ridge. Well, guess what? Little Ridge is about half a mile that way. And... You know, so it's funny how you stumble upon these people and don't realize how far away they are, how close they are, uh, until you start talking. That's what YouTube creating is all about. It's about making contact and, and commenting on people's videos, you know, giving them thumbs up and interacting with 
the the creators that you like and I get that with a lot of uh, a lot of the same people on my videos uh, generally when a video goes out I'm getting the same handful of people commenting on each video so it's great to have that connection with other youtubers as well as some of the just general public who watches and, and really enjoys what you're doing so so this guy's channel is called Maritime Spook and I will put his channel right here so you guys can go check it out and see if it's something that you like. So basically his channel is about the outdoors and survival and different stuff like that. So not that I'm really into that sort of thing, but for some reason his channel just kind of lured me in. So it might do the same thing to you. So I would encourage you to go take a look at Maritime Spook and subscribe to his channel and send him a message telling him that old car auto guy sent you there. So basically when I found out that he was from Little Ridge, I went and found his, what I thought was his Facebook to try and jog my memory of who I remember this guy to be. And, and in my mind, I thought I knew who he was. And when I got to his Facebook, sure enough, it was the same fellow. Now let's turn the clock back to probably 1998, 99, maybe. This same guy had a 79 Chrysler Newport, I believe it was. It was two-tone blue. And I was working at Cox Electronics at the time. I was a salesman, but there was nobody around that particular day to install a stereo in his car. So guess who got elected to do it? Me. He remembered that after he sent me a message back saying, yeah, you installed it on my 79 Chrysler. And I'm like, wow. How ironic is that? So here we are today. We're both YouTubers. We both had, or I still have my 79 Chrysler Cordova. He had a 79 Newport. Man, you think this thing's a boat? You should have seen that one. So having said all that, guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning into my channel. I say that every video and I, I, I can't stress it enough. I really, really appreciate it. So if you haven't done it yet, please, I encourage you to go down and hit that subscribe button and bell notification so that you get notified every time I put up a new video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and comment in that comment box down below. Guys, don't forget, always focus on the windshield and not the rear view mirror. God bless. I love you guys. We'll see you in the next upload.